Flynn, an instructor, and welcome to your role as a volunteer instructor with the American Red Cross. My name is Mandy Estel. I'm the training specialist for the Georgia Territory, and I'll be conducting this training today. I'm excited that you're embarking in this path of learning, growing, and community outreach. Although your main responsibility will be to teach, you will also learn from these onboarding video segments that you play a big role in administrative and logistical processes. Make sure to keep an open mind, pace yourself, and ask your administrative team plenty of questions whenever you get confused. During this welcome session, we'll be going over volunteer instructor roles and responsibilities, as well as the structure of the American Red Cross organization, specifics on the PHSS department and our products, the department reporting structure, workflows, and the expectations for you going through the process of onboarding, as well as what you can expect from us. Congratulations again on being approved as an instructor. Instructors represent the Red Cross by being the face of the organization. We also felt that you had the skills to learn and adapt quickly and efficiently, as there will be many processes that you will be exposed to that are modified for efficiency on a regular basis. The American Red Cross has an international presence, and as a private organization, we depend on public funds to deploy our vast community relief efforts. As a volunteer organization, most of our relief efforts are managed and executed by talented volunteers such as yourself. Also, our pool of CPR and first aid instructors include talented individuals such as yourself who have chosen to commit and teach voluntarily. We are guided by our seven fundamental principles, which include humanity and neutrality, which drive our decision making and approaches and make us one of the most inclusive organizations in the world. Our mission is to prevent and alleviate human suffering in the face of emergencies by mobilizing the power of volunteers and the generosity of donors. Paid staff and volunteers are treated equally throughout the organization and all have critical roles in ensuring that our clients receive the best service. So what is expected of you as a volunteer instructor? Obviously, you're going to be instructing classes. And that's going to be in the area of your certification. That means if you are a first aid CPR AED instructor, you'll be teaching those classes in the local community. Classes are taught to Red Cross standards of excellence. Instructors are expected to arrive at least 30 minutes before a class time to set up the classroom and remain 30 minutes after the class to break down and handle any type of administrative paperwork. You should be able to lift at least 30 pounds. And we recommend that volunteer instructors teach two classes a year or more. This helps keep your skills sharp, and it also keeps, helps to keep you aware of any process changes that may uh, happen in between when you uh, teach your classes. As a volunteer instructor, you're responsible for the following. To ensure that the course material and training equipment for the classes that you're teaching are available and prepared before the assigned class to complete and submit paperwork within 24 hours of class completion, and to clean and return materials to a designated area after the class. As an instructor, you will utilize the Red Cross computer support systems and programs to communicate schedule availability, to record your volunteer work hours, and to complete your recertification of your instructor certification. Volunteer instructors are encouraged to participate in the, in the instructor conference calls and attend the in-service trainings when they're scheduled. Volunteer instructors periodically are given an in-class audit by the training team. This may be announced or unannounced. Dress code for all courses. All instructors must be dressed appropriately following the dress code, which at a minimum is non-denim pants, a red cross or plain polo, and closed toed shoes. Instructors should be certain that their clothing covers them completely when they're engaged in this teaching skill session. They may need to kneel or crouch down on the ground during a skill session. As I mentioned before, all instructors are expected to teach to the standard. But what do we mean by that? All instructors must use their instructor manual when teaching any course. This includes the blended learning supplements if you're teaching a blended learning class. We encourage all instructors to use the class 
course presentation, which is a PowerPoint with videos. If it's not available, then the instructor needs to use the classroom DVD and the activity skill sheet. Instructors need to evaluate students based on the proficiency of their skills. Each skill has an assessment tool for instructors to use. It's in the instructor's manual. And instructors should use it to evaluate if students meet objectives. The end of course scenarios are student led for lay responder and instructor led for CPR for professional rescuer. All students must either be a prompter or a responder for each required scenario. Please refrain from injecting personal stories, comments, and beliefs into the presentation of the course material. Anything said, even if a disclaimer is offered, such as, this is just my opinion, may be perceived by the participants as authorized American Red Cross information. Comments might distract from key points, offend some participants, and add time to your class. Consult the instructor agreement and code of conduct for more guidance on this subject. Now let's look at the organizational structure of the American Red Cross. The Red Cross focuses on humanitarian lines of service that include disaster relief, services to the armed forces, international services, biomedical services, community services, and preparedness, health, and safety services. Each line of service has specific goals and are staffed by both paid and volunteer members. You are a volunteer instructor for the Preparedness, Health, and Safety Services Division of the American Red Cross. Each line of service falls into a different reporting line, either national or chapter slash regional. Disaster services is a line of service that takes advantage of a chapter or regional reporting structure. Since each community disaster relief needs are highly unique to geographical and and the demographics for that area. Biomedical services and PHSS have a national reporting line, since it is expected that these services are delivered as close to the same standard way everywhere, despite the location. As I mentioned before, PHSS stands for Preparedness, Health, and Safety Services. Its goal is to provide training so that individuals can prevent and are prepared to respond to medical emergencies. A unique feature of PHSS is that our services are also fee associated. This is because donations to the Red Cross are largely used to assist those in crisis during the aftermath of a disaster. Donations to help train people in CPR are rare, since these customers are typically not in a crisis. The PHSS department then keeps itself up and running through the customer purchase of products and services. Not only do these purchases maintain our department, but they help in funding other lines of service in the American Red Cross. Let's do a quick knowledge check. The PHSS department is managed under what level? A, chapter level, B, regional level, C, national level, or D, international level? You thought national level? You were correct. What are PHSS products? PHSS Product lines have a broad scope, from training to equipment to prepared and solution services. Our training list is long, including CPR for lay responders and professional rescuers, to pet first aid, aquatics, and youth focused programs. We also have physical products for sale, including mannequins, emergency preparedness equipment, and reference materials. We have corporate preparedness products, including ready rating systems and drills to measure how effectively a company can respond to an emergency. As a Red Cross instructor, your direct supervisor is a training specialist. The training specialist handles the hiring of instructors, if they're paid instructors, onboarding of all instructors, and also the remediation, counseling, and termination of volunteer and paid instructors if necessary. The reporting structure from the top down starts at our national headquarters in Washington, D.C. Our current national president and CEO for the organization is Gail McGovern. Our national PHSS department president is Jackson Master. 
As a department, we geographically have multiple state delineations called divisions or sectors. These delineations are further divided into territories. Some territories are an aggregate of counties, and some territories are entire states or a couple of states. Sectors and territory designations are mainly based on population size. Examples of territories could include the Georgia Territory or the North and Central Florida Territory. The department is divided as a whole under two main focal operations, service delivery and sales. The service delivery side focuses on the quality and resources needed for effective training to occur, as well as to place publicly open courses on the Red Cross online course catalog. The sales side focuses on customized group trainings and services to corporations and large organizations. The members of the sales team that work closely with corporate customers are known as account managers. Where do volunteer instructors fit? Volunteer instructors report to the training specialist for their territory, along with the other paid instructors and the volunteer instructor coordinator. Your training specialist is considered the program subject matter expert and will generally remediate instructor issues and keep track of performance measures. It's important to keep up with updates from your training specialist as this will impact our quality and consistency in course delivery. Since most training specialists supervise 50 or more instructors as paid and volunteer, on average, please be mindful and probably responding to inquiries and requests by email as it would be unmanageable to call each instructor individually to provide guidance on new directives. Training specialists also consult with each other regularly to find better ways for you as instructors to deliver training more smoothly. Your service delivery manager plays a slightly different role from your training specialist. The manager's focus is to look at overall operations and functions, balance budgets, and develop relationships with other department managers and leaders. The manager supervises the training specialist, the training scheduler, and administrative and logistic coordinators. Another main responsibility of the manager is the handling of customer complaints and issues. The American Red Cross works with the public to deliver trainings to community individuals, private groups that want trainings, and also with whole companies that want to become external providers. While the service delivery team will create the public offering in the Red Cross Public Course Catalog, our account managers on the sales team work to create corporate partnerships for groups and company trainings at both the local and the national level. The service delivery team will then mobilize human and material resources to fulfill all training needs. What's next? Now that you've gone through the general overview of the role of a volunteer instructor and the organization and department structure, I want to give you an idea of what to expect during your onboarding. As a new volunteer instructor, this checklist will help you in your expectations for completing your onboarding. Set up your When to Work account. Your training scheduler will email you the details to set up your When to Work, which is our scheduling software account. Please set up your account and mark your availability. For specific guidance on how to set up the, your account, please watch the video about web-based training. Review the handbook. You should receive a copy of the Volunteer Instructor Handbook. Please review it, mark any questions that you may have, and then follow up with your training specialist to answer those questions. This also lets the training specialist know that you've reviewed the handbook. Be proactive about co-teaching. Our policy is that all instructors, new or transferred, teach at least one class with a seasoned PHS instructor. This is to help ensure consistency in program delivery and to support you in case an issue comes up in the class. Look at the schedule on when to work once your account is set up and pick a specific date that you can either observe or co-teach. And then let the scheduler know. Let us know your logistic needs. Before you teach your first class, please reach out to your designated logistic contact. That may be the logistic coordinator for your territory or another assigned staff. And make sure that you will have the proper material, equipment, your instructor box, and any other administrative or material supplies that you'll need to teach your class. 
be on the lookout for your name tag. Now that you're an official Red Cross instructor, we want your class to know it. We provide a name tag for you, and you should receive it either in the mail or the first time that you teach. And always feel that you can reach out to us. You're welcome to and encouraged to initiate conversation with any of the service delivery staff if you would like clarification or more information about how our classes work or own process. What's expected of you as a new volunteer instructor? We ask this for your patience. This process can take some time to fully complete, especially since some volunteer instructors are only able to volunteer on the weekends or evenings. It depends on the availability of the training, your availability for your personal schedule. Sometimes it depends on equipment and the resources that are available. So the timetable to get you onboarded can vary. But don't, as I mentioned before, don't hesitate to ask questions if you um, want to know more information about the process or what you can do to onboard more quickly. Please also be responsive as we'll need to schedule trainings and meetings and follow up on inquiries to help track your progress. If you are going to a facility to get an orientation to the, facility, the local facility where you will be teaching, please make sure that you fit follow the visitation rules. That means that you may need to schedule an appointment or work with the logistics coordinator to schedule an appointment. Um, if they request that volunteers uh, fill in a sign-in book, please do that. Please be friendly with the local staff there. You never know who may be a donor or another valuable volunteer, such as yourself. And then finally, please be flexible and expect sudden changes. We're always trying to improve the quality of our programs. And that means that sometimes we may change mid-course and decide to go a different direction. And being flexible helps us uh, be able to deliver great quality to our clients. Again, I would like to welcome you. You are integrating into the greatest humanitarian organization in the world and teaching the best CPR and first aid program available in the market. You are now part of one of the most talented training groups. You're now part of One Red Cross.